Hey guys, Henning and Morton here from Flip Normals. In this video, we are going to be talking about another, it's going to be another one of those observation videos which we've done in the past. Recently, I was in Oslo and I saw this really awesome cannon, which I think is made of bronze. And one of the things we've been talking about so much in our videos, particularly one of the most recent one, which is don't just drag and drop smart materials or shaders or pre-made things onto your models, is you really need to observe what it is you want to make. And this is such a cool example because this this cannon here has so much variation from it's a few hundred years old and it's been out in weather like Norwegian weather for two hundred years. <laughs> it's been shot at. It's been in war. It's just a lot of cool stuff in it. I mean, I would love to see a smart material do this. Yeah. Or maybe even like a designer uh, material that just makes a cannon. To be fair, wouldn't be surprised if that was a thing. Yeah. This is some <laughs> crazy stuff out of designer. So. Let's just look at some different things here. Instead of just dragging and dropping a bronze material onto your thing, you know, you here you have you have gunshots. It's been properly smashed up. You have a you have a different color where it's been shot out, where you might have some fire from the muscle, where people have been holding it, and there's just a bunch of a different variation in it. Yeah, and you can see like how much streaking there there is in the oxidation of the of the bronze just where you know rain starts to form uh, the cool thing about this kind of oxidation especially with with weather weathering is that it, water tends to follow the same path mm. so once like a little tiny trench has been dug by water you know it's just going to keep going in that one little trench and then it's just going to get amplified more and more yeah it's really interesting how it all works you can also see which way is up like if you were to flip this around, you know, here there's been way more water and more weathering on the top of it than on the bottom. I also just love the bullet holes. <laughs> it's just pretty, pretty sick. Yeah, and also, you know, probably people are like, maybe not in the winter because it's cold, but in the summer people would probably like sit on it and yeah, stuff. Exactly. So you would, you would rub off part of that oxidation on the top. And that's why you see a lot more on the bottom. Might also look like there are some scratches as well, which people actually just scratched into it by hand. Maybe yeah. some asshole tourists or something like that. <laughs> Here you can clearly see the patterning as well. And this again goes into why we observe things. Because this is something you're just not getting this variation from like a pre-made shader or anything like that. You truly need to look at individual items like this. I think it's so cool. Like just if you if you really look at the at the oxidation of the bronze is that you've got like, let's say like three distinct layers. You've got like the bronze layer underneath and then you've got a darker oxidized, maybe even four, darker oxidized green layer, then a lighter green on top and then like this almost kind of green, yellow, whitish. Yeah. And so there's like, there's many layers to this. So, you know, obviously uh, it's like water falls down and starts to oxidize and then maybe water finds other paths and then sort of builds on top of that. That's why you get this layering of, of oxidiza oxidation. And you can also totally use materials like base materials to, to start with this. Here you can see around here, you can use a curvature map, you know, just to get the basis mm -hmm. of it. And then you go in and break it up. Like if you want this level of, um, of quality, you, uh, you can maybe take it to 30% with base materials, just smart materials, shaders already pre-made. And that might be enough just to get it into a shot. And then you can always just really amp it up when, with this kind of detailing. You see here as well, this, this is something that a curvature map would really just take care of. Mix in some ambient occlusion with this, do some hand painting on it, add some cool grunge maps, some some maps you've t you've taken from photos as well. Yeah. And just read like Morton said, like really layer it up. Yeah, it's a, I love looking at these old sort of historical artifacts because there's so much history. in Like it's crazy how much history there can be in just one object. Yeah. And you know, the same with this where it's again one of those things I think we talked about in another video with uh, people in Hong Kong like rubbing the bulls on their forehead or something yeah. for good luck you know same thing here it's a, it's a raised point any raised point from the base surfaces is always going to have a more shiny sort of uh, characteristics and it's going to be closer to the base material just because it, it, it gets exposed more and you know, probably with a face like this people will touch it or something yeah and you see different areas with the same height like you see this and this or and this is about the same height and then you have this which is lower yeah. and this has this is far less uh, far less uh, touched by humans and weather yeah but you could also you could see like as um if if you're placing this is in an environment let's say you were doing a fantasy rpg set in the mythical oslo for some <laughs> reason <laughs> during the winter where there's snow 
you know, the, the kind of snow that's fallen here. Like now, now there's no snowfall, like the snow has settled, but there's just like tiny pieces of snow that are around the cannon parts of them start to freeze mm -hmm. as well which is super cool so you you also have different layers of materials on top of the cannon and where this cannon is is also important because this is in oslo it doesn't rain a whole lot where i'm from in bergen it rains all the time it rains <laughs> like four times the amount so there would just be a lot more it would it would just be weathered a lot more by rain and also here when i took it i was freezing my butt off it was <laughs> right minus 10 degrees out which is which is not great <laughs> no. so the the ice here is frozen solid so depending on the temperature, this is what we keep talking about. You really think about where your objects are. Yeah. They're going to look so different. If this thing here was 200 years old and placed in a museum, it would look very different. Oh, that's badass. Yeah, just more <laughs> scratches. This. But it's, it's one of those things where, like you saw on the other side as well, the cannon, where it's just it just adds a lot of story to it. But it's, yeah. it's cool if you look on the sort of left left side of the, like the little bullet hole there. You can see the... On top, we've got a lot of oxidisa oxidation, but below, it's actually pretty clean, mm. pretty close to the original bronze material, just because it hasn't been exposed to the weather as much. More roller holes. I think this is kind of interesting. It's very subtle, but you see just a little ridge around it, yeah. and then you have a tiny bit of snow in it. And you would not get this from, from a smart material, unless you're crazy. And also the, like, the tiny halo... You know, you see that more on the bigger bullet holes, but especially the smaller ones here, it can be a little harder to detect. Like it's it's a it's a different hue. There's mm. a different hue to the greens around it there. Like I wouldn't have thought about that. No, exactly. More just this has just been so much battle. This yeah. is uh, this cannon is still used today for when you know the Swedes the Swedes attack the oh, Danish yeah. come in. <laughs> it's used for uh, for ceremonial purposes. It's interesting how like I really like the texture of the the bullet holes or whatever they are like maybe it was hit with another probably another cannon or something yeah um but just how it's been torn off yeah. like completely and just scratched off that's cool also just a little interesting thing here as well when it comes to if you're shooting your own reference normally i'm saying that if you're looking at some reference you you can't really project that onto your model because it's it's trash it has so much lighting in it particularly if it's taken during during daylight and sunny but this lighting here is actually pretty damn good because it's if you, particularly if you had a polarized lens here, yeah. a filter, you know, you could straight up use this because there is there is only ambient lighting. It's overcast and there's white ambient lighting from everywhere. So this here, you could actually use directly in your textures. You wouldn't necessarily have to break this up from scratch in, you know, designer or painter, no. or Mari, whatever it is you're using. The, the, like the only problem with reflective materials or reflective objects, like you can use the reference like if it's pretty straight on but you always run into the issue of something like this that's reflective down here where you start to see like the reflection of yeah, the snow exactly. here but you know you can work work around this but like this kind of lighting because it's so soft and like f it comes from around everywhere and with the snow as well there's like a nice little like light box all the way around exactly and when you're painting as well it's one of the things you're supposed to do is you're supposed to remove any kind of shading information so this here in if you were to paint texture, it should really just have a single color. But what we kind of use to cheat it is <laughs> we still just include a little bit of this. We include a little bit of shadows, a little bit of highlights, just because it just looks better. Yeah. It's not physically physically accurate, and you do get double shadowing and double and double reflections. But you know, it's still cool. I think it's cool to see like just another just a little thing about the layering here is you can see darker bronze underneath, and then where the the let's say the fragment hit it like sort of bulged up the cannon a little bit then that started to oxidize there and then probably like here you can see snow starts to collect that probably drips down so you get a very mm. specific kind of discoloring here because this probably it, like because this is in contact with more pure bronze it probably pulls some of the metal out with it as well when it starts to to melt I also think you can see some of it is based on uh, on the cold damage as well. It looks a bit like snow crystals or ice yeah, crystals yeah. because this year is it, it's such a cold country. <laughs> Don't go there in February, guys. <laughs> it's pretty cold. <laughs> that's, that's pretty this cool. This is what I do as well when I'm traveling or just anywhere. I just shoot a bunch of text textures, texture references, just because you... You, that, that's that's how you truly observe. If you were to try to draw it or if you're using it from memory, like there's too much observational details here. Yeah, but just like if you look at if you look at just how much variation there is just here, like I would have assumed that okay, it's probably just covered in oxidized stuff. 
Oh, but no, we have a layer of more mm. darker bronze there as well. So it's it's one of these things where if you try to do this without reference, you could probably get to a decent result, but then you look at a real canon from Oslo and you go, oh, okay, it looks nothing like it. Exactly. One of the things I always do whenever people ask me for feedback is I try to get into the history of the object. If somebody shows me a canon, I would be, you know, how, how old, how long has it been there? what's the temperature like and just stuff like what's the temperature like sounds like a stupid question it sounds like i'm just being annoying but the look you like we can see here before it doesn't have frost damage or doesn't have water damage mm. even the, the amount of snow here you can see the, the snow crystals you can see the crystal in here this is something you only see if it's really cold out if it's if it's like one degree two degrees or something the snow is so different yeah it's going to be it, it, it just has a completely different look for, look of it like if you've ever been uh to like a cold country <laughs> like i don't general know general cold country canada or anywhere in scandinavia finland that kind of stuff uh during the winter when it's really cold and it is snowing you you have this special kind of snow like powdery snow like the mm. fresh snow when it's minus 10 degrees where you know it just doesn't melt so it doesn't really bond either you no. can't really make snowballs out of it it's but once you get to like those like minus two minus one degrees that's the perfect snowball temperature and they hurt. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you, you and you can ski in this. Oh this yeah, is perfect. Oh, that's great for sneeing. For sneeing. <laughs> for sneeing. <laughs> Good words, what you are. <laughs> also interesting, with like different uh, different layers of paint. Yeah. You can tell it's based on. It's a metal which has probably been painted and maybe painted a few more times. So, just a lot of different variation. Yeah. One, one thing I was always I used to screw this up like crazy. For some reason, whenever I was doing wheels, I would make the wood grain go the same way, so that the wood grain goes this way, and here the wood grain goes this way. I would make them go the same way. So if this goes this way, I would make this go that way. It was just because it's kind of like nice and orderly, but it yeah. makes no logical sense because it's just a wheel. Yeah, the only reason that would make sense is if they've been like placed on the cannon in the same direction, and the and whatever you're moving has only been moved forward. <laughs> yeah. Like, as soon as you start to turn this, like, around one axis, then one wheel starts to spin more exactly. than the other, and then you end up with something like this. And then you might also have cases where the, the the it's been snowing, and then the it's been moving, it's been moved afterwards. So you might, you could, in theory, actually have snow. You have snow down here, and you could have icicles going up yeah. if the water had gone down here. Yeah, it's like, it's also like you see, it's in, it's actually interesting how if you look at the way the wood grain is going, at the top of this wheel, it's sort of like the paint has been chipped off mm. to the side of the wheel. I don't know if maybe the wood grain holds on to it better when it's more like with in the direction of the wood grain because there, cause there's not a lot of chipping on the side. No. That could also just be because like it's been standing there for a very long time and maybe people touch it yeah but it's just like an interesting observation in terms of how much chipping has happened here and how little has happened here on the sides it's interesting just looking at this how how good the lighting here is <laughs> for texture capturing like this is probably the best lighting i've ever seen when i've been capturing textures myself and this kind of looks like a pig like you see the eye there and the eye there and then like little <laughs> snout yeah there you go i can't side. unsee that now but a little he's a punk yeah, exactly. so has a <laughs> that's a free one for you. <laughs> Observation. So, I mean, the, the the point of this video here it really isn't just to look at objects and point and mean like, hey, you're seeing this. It's more so that you can translate this into your CG so that you can, if you were to replicate something like this or really any object, that you would go beyond the regular depth of, cool, it's a cannon. Yeah. But, you know, you think about how old is it? What era is it from? Where has it been? What's the climate like? Particularly what's the climate like here becomes very important because this has drastically changed the look of it. If this cannon had, if this cannon's sister had been shipped to Malta at the same time, it would have looked vastly different because then you have no rain and only sun damage for yeah. 200 years. Yeah, I really think that, you know, we could have just made one observation video and then, I mean, that includes all the information that you'll ever need. But I think it's nice looking at specific examples because that then we can point out more specific things that like, okay, this is how this object would behave in this kind of environment. So I hope that's kind of helpful. I would also love to make a video one day where we do something like this, where we actually do it in 3D as well. Mm. We, we first look at a reference and then we try to replicate it as close as we can in 3D. Yeah. So we're not all talk. Yeah, we're not all talk. <laughs> <laughs> we're really good texture artists, guys, but we're only going to look at look at photos. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, I mean, that that's pretty much it for this video. We mm. really hope this has been useful. And let us know if you want to see more observation videos like this or more like art fundamentals. Yeah. And make sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe and hit the little bell button for uh, notifications. Thank you.